find my Good evening, and this is the Recreation and Parks Committee meeting for Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. Um, I'm going to go through this agenda. Bear with me. I have roll call. I have Ms. Shanahan, Ms. McMurr, uh, Ms. Revoluz, and Mr. Goldstein and myself are present. Bear with me, I'm trying to do double screen here. Um, Kevin, uh, the minutes of the February 8th, 2023 uh, minutes. Uh, Kahai, are there any uh, um, corrections to the minutes? Let's see, anybody raise their hand? You guys just bear with me, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in a hotel. All right, a motion to approve those minutes. All in favor, please raise your hand. Any abstentions? All right, approved. Diana, you're okay with the minutes? Were you present? I'm just listening in. I'm not. Oh. Yeah, I'm not here. I just hold on. I'm just listening in. I can't you vote. Still go, on this I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There you go. What are you trying to do? All right. Any one on for public partic participation other than? Um, the folks on the agenda, Ken, or Deline? It does not appear so. Thank you. So there's no old business. We'll move on to new business. Uh, the city of Norwalk reserves the right to cancel the event for public health or safety reasons as determined by the city of Norwalk and its sole discretion. The city of Norwalk shall not be liable for damages arising from the cancellation of the event. Item 5.1. Approve the use of Veterans Memorial Park field and immediate surrounding ground by Vox Church for their local Easter egg hunt to be held on Saturday, April 1st, 2023 from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Set up time to begin at 7.30 a.m. with tear down 1 p.m. Rain date, Saturday, April 8th, 2023, approximately 300 people. And if you all don't mind, I'm just going to move the items because I, I don't want to keep going back and forth. Okay. Um, so I'm going to move that item. Uh, and is uh, Mr. Permides on the line? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Great. Thanks for having me. Sure. You want to talk a little bit about your event? Yeah. So um, I'm the pastor of Vox Church. We've never done something like this before. We meet Sunday mornings at the Wall Street Theater in downtown Norwalk. And so, um, yeah, we've been in Norwalk about a year and we just want to provide a open to all, uh, specifically for ages zero to 10, uh, community Easter egg hunt. And it is sponsored by our church. The costs are taken care of by our church. We're going to have about 10,000 eggs. We it's actually a kind of a stripped back event, nothing too crazy outside of we. this is new. So we don't technically know roughly how many people will come out. We're going to promote it on social media. Um, we're going to do some mailers and postcards. Uh, we're going to even have, you know, just people connected to our church, like teachers, their different series of influence um, pass us along in their circles. Uh, but yeah, I'll have, we'll have about 25, 30 volunteers that will help run this event. We're going to have games. It's not just the Easter egg hunt. It's about a two hour event, 10 to 12. And, um, yeah, we'll have like face painting crafts. Um, and again, it's, it's all, uh, just provided by us. And so we just want to, in a very tangible way, just allow our community or our city, make that open to families and children in the area. Um, we have a rain date scheduled for the following weekend, which should be the day for us before Easter, April 9th. And so it's April 1st or April 8th is kind of our hopes. We're, we're hoping that, of course, the weather is great April 1st. Um, but yeah, just looking at Veterans Park parking wise, I think might be the only like major concern from what I'm seeing with just where the application is at right now. Um, I think there will be enough parking. We know that we can also refer people to park across the bridge at the um, like the the parking garage areas, parking spaces by the Maritime Aquarium, and they can just make that little walk across the bridge with their with their kiddos in case the lot gets full. We're gonna have volunteers out there, like a frame signs, so we'll have like a parking crew helping park people. Um, 
but yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. I don't know if you have any questions. Thanks again for having me. Sure, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stowers, do you have anything to say? Well, um, this is a new event. And so as, as the gentleman said, he doesn't really know how many to expect, but they've estimated a certain amount, but I've uh, witnessed these types of events and they're, um, they're pretty challenging. We don't have a problem with it. It seems as as they are built, um, going through their special uh, events permit that they've um, completely um, very thoroughly went through and, and checked all the boxes. They even have done things uh, above above board, like checking to see if uh, their uh, announce announcement equipment was um, over the noise or, or ordinance. So they 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 try to cover every base. So. Uh, we think they're reliable and and uh, we don't have a problem with this event at all. Well, well, that's actually good to hear. I don't know of too many people who would have done that. So that's really good to hear. Ken, you've been doing this a long time. I don't know if that's something that folks usually take up on their own to consider. So no, I don't think ever. Never. <laughs> so thank you for that, Mr. Uh, uh, Pastor, is it? I did, I'm sorry. It is? it is. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. You can just call me Dan. Um, All right. Yeah. You know, I, I had one quick question for you, like generator wise, we're not going to be doing, again, a massive production. It's more so for facilitating the event of like when we release different kids for different sections of the hunt, that type of stuff, like logistics. We're going to have just a speaker and a, and a microphone. Um, is there like a extra step for like generator wise or limitation to like wattage and all that? Do you have, is that something just to follow up with me after and email me about? If, if you're going to have just a speaker and a microphone, we do have a single outside outlet on the main bathroom building that you would be able to use. Um, it, it is a single outlet, but as long as you're only running a, a microphone, you should be okay. So uh, if you want, email Rebecca uh, tomorrow, okay. and then we can give you some more details. Okay. And is that is that kind of, I'm trying to picture from our schematics, would that be close to where we want to be with this with the so if, you, if your back is toward if your back is toward the large flagpole and you're looking at the main bathroom building in the right corner is the outlet okay okay so well, I'll, I'll touch base with rebecca that's yep. great yeah thank you yep thank you thank you item five five two and 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 let me uh, just say this: once your item is uh, approved, um, you're free to 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 go or stay and listen, if you like. Um, okay. All in favor, please uh, signify by raising your hand. All right, it's approved. Thank you so much. All right, thank you very much. Have a great night. You too. Five to approve the use of Cranberry Park Pavilion and immediate surrounding grounds by Anchor Academy Inc. DBA Regina Passes Academy for their field day to be held on Friday, June 2nd, 2023 from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Set up time to begin at 8.30 a.m. with tear down at 3.30 p.m., approximately 215 people. And we have Mr. Quetella. Hi there, yes. I'm sorry, Geraldine, we just need somebody to move it. Oh, I'm sorry, I will move it. I'm gonna move it. Uh, okay, Mr. Catella. Yes, hi. Thanks again for having me tonight. Um, this will be our hopefully third um, field day, third annual field day. Uh, Regina Pachis is a um, small independent Catholic school um, located on uh, Main Avenue and uh, West Avenue and Leonard Street in Norwalk. Um, my wife happens to be the principal of the school um, and four of my six kids go there. Uh, we are very, very excited. We've always had a wonderful time at Cranberry Park. Uh, we make use of the pavilion. Um, for a barbecue, uh, we bring in an outside vendor, um, a gourmet hot dog cart, um, and an ice cream uh, vendor for the kids. Um, and then we have uh, field day type uh, athletic activities for uh, for the kids. So a little you know competition between students um, first, and then we end with lunch and uh, and ice cream. So it's always been a, a well attended event, and it's our, it's our last event of the year. We are finished with school after that day. Great. Uh, Mr. Stowers? Yeah, as he's indicated, you know, it's been over the last three years and um, we haven't had any issues with it. It's, it seems to be a, a good um, event for this school. And um, 
we um, encourage them to continue to have these events. So that. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any any questions from the committee members? Comments? All right. Okay. All in favor? All right. Any objections? No. Nope, everybody. All right. Thank you, Mr. Katepa. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a wonderful okay. night. Thank you. Good evening. Five three. Approve the use of Taylor Farm Park and immediate surrounding grounds by multiple. Myeloma Research Foundation Care of Event 360 Inc. for their MMRF team for Cures Walk Run to be held on Saturday, June 3rd from 7.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Set up time to begin on Friday, June 2nd at 8 a.m. with tear down Saturday, June 3rd at 4 p.m. Approximately 350 people. I will move the item and is Lindsay Griffin on the line. Hello. Yes. yes. Hi. Thank you. Um, I have one quick correction to make to them. It says tear down at 4 p.m. We will be complete with tear down by 4 p.m. on um, June 3rd. Okay. Um, so this is a repeating event. We've been um, we've been here at Taylor Farm Park for several several years now. Um, this event benefits the Multiple Myeloma Research Foundation. Um, multiple myeloma, for anyone who's not aware, is a type of blood cancer. Um, and it's a walk around event. Um, so we have a relatively small footprint over at Taylor Farm Park um, with just basic, kind of a basic setup, tents, nothing larger than a 10 by 10 um, stage setup. We'll have generator there. and. Um, then we utilize uh, Calf Pasture Beach Road. We close one lane of Calf, Calf Pasture Beach Road and go up to the school and come back down and also close uh, Canfield right there outside of the parking lot. Um, and then also utilize the path along the beach for our course. Okay, okay. Mr. Stowers or? Ken? Great, great annual event, um, you know, benefits um, um, Search Foundation, and um, well, it's a walk run, and so um, um, they we began uh, filling out their special events permit. Uh, I think we're real close to completing that. Um, I just think this is a wonderful event, so it, it's the type of thing that you know uh, Norwalk needs to do more of, actually. So. Yeah. Endorse it. Ken, anything to add? No, very good event. You know, we had great luck with them in the past. Any questions or comments from committee members? Nope. So all in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All right. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Have a great evening. You do the same. Bye-bye. Five four. Approve the use of Veteran Memorial Park and immediate surrounding grounds by Norwalk Lacrosse Association for their pound on the sound across Jamboree event to be held on Saturday, June 3rd and Sunday, June 4th. And from 8 a.m. from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. set up on Saturday, June 3rd at 6.30 a.m. with teardown on Saturday, June 4th, 2023 at 6 p.m. Approximately 400 people. I will move the item. And we have Mr. Corey on the line. Hi, yes, I'm here. How are you? Uh, uh, my name is Matthew Corey from uh, Norwalk Junior Lacrosse, and um, we're bringing back the Pound on the Sound. We had, had done it 10 previous years uh, in a row, successfully down at Vets prior to COVID. And um, we've got the energy and the enthusiasm to bring it back here again for our 10th year. Great. All right. Uh, Mr. Stowers? We actually met with this organization yesterday. Um, for more space for their um, uh, lacrosse games across the uh, city. And we talked a little bit about this found and sound. Um, it, it's, uh, lacrosse is a growing sport. Um, it needs to be um, exposed more. And so this is one way they do it through these, through these tournaments. And uh, yeah, so 
we we are glad they're getting back to uh, you know the business of of having these tournaments every year. So thank yeah. you. So yeah, any, we we're in favor of it. Any comments, Ken? No, I'll be in touch with the league in terms of painting the the fields as we've done in past years. Okay. Well, I've got the diagram. So I, I do. Any questions from the uh, committee members? So I just, I, you know, my son played uh, 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 lacrosse years ago when he was also playing football for for Brian McMahon, and I know that the, you know the teams like to do that to keep in shape in their off season. And so, how what's been the experience during COVID? Kind of, Matt. Well, um, COVID knocked us out for spring, obviously, because it uh, our season begins usually March or April. Uh, so come. March of uh, 2020, we all know we were locked in our houses. Um, we came back towards the end of that year and were able to do some summer, uh, some summer lacrosse. Um, numbers waned, numbers knocked back a little bit, but we've been able to build them back up here in terms of just general participation. And we anticipate that um, this pound on the sound will be received just the same way it was back in 2019. We've got countless friends and, and uh, acquaintances elsewhere and all over Fairfield County, they cannot wait to get back down the Vets Park for the Pound on the Sound. It's uh, it's a premier lacrosse event all over Connecticut, hosted by us at Norwalk. Great, great. Well, I wish you much success. All Thanks. Right. Thanks for asking. Appreciate it. Okay, I think we're all set, right? We did vote on. <laughs> all right. Um, five five. Forgive me, guys. We voted on that, right? I asked the question. We yes. did. Yes, you did. Oh, we did. Thank you, Delaine. I, I I usually don't ask questions, Mr. Corey, after we voted on something, but I just had to ask you how how your lacrosse um, organization was doing. So I'm glad to, to know that things are on the up. Thank so, you, ma'am. Thank you. Have a good evening. You five, as well. Five. Approve the use. Uh, Veterans Park and immediate surrounding grounds by Triangle Community Center for their Pride in the Park event to be held on Saturday, June 10th, 2023 from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. Set up time to begin on Saturday, June 10th, 2023 at 8 a.m. with teardown at 10 p.m. Rain date Saturday, June 11th, 2023, approximately 6,000 people. I will move the item and uh, we have Mr. Revis. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Edson from the Triangle Community Center. Thank you so much for your consideration. Uh, we are actually moving from Matthew's Mansion to the Veterans Park, which is super exciting. Um, it provides us a lot more space to grow our event uh, and also provides a lot of the businesses in South Norwalk with some much needed foot traffic uh, during the month of June as well. So we're super excited for to have this event at Veterans Park. Um, I would just like to say um, if we could have some time the evening before, because some of our vendors like to set up the evening before. So vendors like uh, porta potties, perhaps fencing would set up perhaps the evening before. If not, then we could definitely have everyone sort of come in and set up the morning of. I, I think you'd have to touch base with Rebecca to see if we have anything scheduled prior Perfect. to your event. Perfect. I'll check in with her then. Okay. Uh, any comments, Mr. Sowers? No, these events are held all over the country. And um, um, it's a big pride event. Uh, uh, just needed to um, uh, show up uh, community support. And um, uh, so, yeah, we're uh, we kind of. Um, I think it was a blessing in disguise that we couldn't use Matthews uh, because anticipated construction um, on the mansion there. Um, but result in uh, just what um, said, and that is it's going to uh, deliver a little bit of uh, vitality to the rest of the area, so to uh, businesses and restaurants and and that kind of thing. So I think it's uh, kind of a blessing in disguise. So thank you, Edson. Thank you, Mrs. Sowers. 
and, and Mr. Rivas, is, is 6,000 um, your average number of attendance or are you anticipating a little bit more or how does that? We are anticipating a little bit more. Um, I think last year we were about 8,500. Um, and I think that it's between eight hours. So we're not definitely getting 8,600 people bombarding us at one point in time. It ebbs and flows throughout the entire event. Our event is about eight hours long. And the beginning of our event, in case anyone hasn't been to our event, please come. The beginning of our event is a two hour family field day that is family specific. Uh, and then after that, you know, all the vendors are set up during that time. After the family event happens, we do have bars, we do have, you know, food trucks that come in, we do have entertainment that starts, we'll have a DJ that's playing music, we'll have, you know, games and all those things so that people are entertained and our vendors do come in with a lot of tchotchkes to give out, a lot of prizes to give out, uh, and uh, unique ways to engage the public that comes to our events. Great, great. Any questions from the committee? No? All right, all in favor? All right. Thank you, Mr. Rivas. Thank you. Have a great night. You too. Five, six, approve the use of the showmobile at Calf Pasture Beach and immediate surrounding grounds by third taxing district for their third taxing district summer concert series to be held on Sunday, July 16th, the 23rd, the 30th, August 6th, 13th, 20th, and 27th of 2023 from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Set up time to begin on every Sunday at 1 p.m. with tear down at 8 p.m., approximately 300 to 350 people. I will move the item. Um, Mr. Stowers, you'll to speak to this. I, I can speak to that, Madam okay. Chair. Um, okay. the, the district couldn't make it tonight. Uh, so this is the summer concert series uh, that, uh, held by the district. They've been doing it for 27 years now. Uh, it's kind of a staple at the beach. Um, you know, no issues, you know, it's a seamless, uh, seamless event, crowds love it, and, and it gives us, you know, something down there on Sundays. Okay. All right. All in favor? Or any, uh, okay. All right. All right. It passes. Thank you. Five, seven, approve the use of Cranberry Park and immediate surrounding grounds by students for their annual summer picnic to be held on Tuesday, July 18th, 2023, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Set up time to begin at 8 a.m., with tear down at 7 p.m. Rain date, Wednesday, July 19th, 2023, approximately 200 to 350 people. I will move the item and um, Sylvie Ayanacone is on the line. Yes, hi guys. I am uh, Sylvie Ayanacone from Sue Leonard's. I, uh, we do this annual picnic every year for our team members. It's a good way to, you know, have a good time with them during the day. They bring their spouses, kids, we have a couple of games um, and it's just a good way to get together, you know, out of the uh, ordinary that we do at Stu Leonard's every day. So we're hoping to have this beautiful day last, last year and uh, just continue to do it. Okay. Um, any comments from Mr. Stowers and Mr. Hughes? No, no. any comments from no. the committee? All right, all right, all in favor? All right, thank you, passes. Good luck, Ms. Thank Diana. You Thank you. Thank Have you a good guys. evening. You bye -bye. too. Bye-bye. Five, eight. We are going to table uh, items eight and nine. And uh, Mr. Stowers and Mr. Hughes can explain that to the committee. If you like. Yeah, we're just waiting to gather some more information from the applicants. So we don't want to bring up, you know, a, a, an event before you guys. But we don't have all the answers yet. So, you know, this will appear again next month. Yeah, we have more time on these events. Uh, okay. it just, this just wasn't enough information um, to satisfy us. So um, we know it wouldn't satisfy them. So we'll be back. Um, like, as Ken said, we'll be back next month. Okay. 510, approve the use of Calf Pasture Beach and immediate surrounding grounds by Mountain Workshop for their team building positive school climate programs to be held on Monday, September 11, 2023, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Set up time to begin at 7 a.m. with tear down at 4 p.m., approximately 350 people. And I will move the item and Mr. Tulo. Hi, line. everyone. Hello. Can you Welcome share a little back. bit? <laughs> yeah, so um, 
I was here last month as well. And uh, as always, the floodgates open and, and the schools want more and more uh, programming. So um, these are our standard field day slash STEM build programs where kids are building PVC carts together in small groups and um, they're pushable by a team and they race them carrying a product that they have to keep safe. And it's all about the design and the communication and the building process. And then half of the group is also doing some of our Olympic team challenges, which are team building based activities where they're working together to um, compete in these small 12 to 15 minute games, which are perfect because I know my kids only last mentally for 12 to 15 minutes at a time. So um, it's a, a great program, um, certainly a great set of activities that the, the students at schools get a lot out of, so. Great. Uh, any uh, comments from Mr. Stowers or Mr. Hughes? No. Any questions or comments from the committee? No? So all in favor, please signify, raise your hand. Thank you. That was easy, Mr. Tulo, right? I'm going to stick around because I think there's oh, one I more. Think, yeah, I guess you had more, right? <laughs> I, I can say the same thing again if you'd like. <laughs> We're going to get right to it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't 11. see. Oh, I, yeah. I, I apologize. That's This is my fault. I was supposed to add September 27th as a date. <laughs> and I think that's what he was talking about. He has one more. I don't see it, right? No, it was an addition after the agenda was posted. Okay. And so you want to add September 27th. So I'm not sure if you want to amend uh, the last motion. I'm not sure if you could because you voted on it or if you want to pick it up as its own separate item. So you don't have it? It's, it's the same exact thing. It's just another date, September another 27th. Another date. Yeah. Be able, able to read the same except for another date. Um, just an addition, additional date. Okay, so I'll make a motion to include an, uh, I, I don't know if we call it 10A or do we do it at the bottom? I don't know. Let me figure this one out. Um, Mr. Kent, do you mind holding on? Yeah, no, no problem at all. Okay. Uh, 511, I want to go through these, right? And then we'll go back. You know, Darlene, you know what we could do? But we can we can have it. I'll put this on the agenda for next month. We won't have him come to the meeting again, and we'll just approve the whole thing again Perfect. next month with September twenty seventh. Ken, you don't have to come. You don't have to come next month. I appreciate that because I'll be that in work. Italy. <laughs> so we'll do it that way. It'll be cleaner. It'll be cleaner that way. Yeah, because I was thinking we have to add it at the end. Like where would we put that? No, so, it'll okay. be cleaner. I'll add it next month. That's September twenty. Yeah, and it's September <laughs> that time. Yep. Yep. I All really right. appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. Thank have you. Have a good night. You bye too. bye. 511 authorize a purchasing agent to issue a purchase order on R&S rentals and sales in an amount not to exceed $36,140.11 for the purchase of a Kubota L4760 HST tractor off source well contract uh, 031121. Um, and I'll move that item. Uh, Mr. Stowers, so, so, uh, or Ken, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So Madam Chair, we just need to add the, um, I just noticed the account number was left off. It's going to be the same account number as item number 12. So I'll just read it. It's 0923-6030-5777. C0771. That's the account number that's being paid from. Okay. So this is a, uh, this is a tractor purchase, which will replace one of our existing multi-use tractors. Uh, we use these tractors to rototill the clay ball fields, to aerate our grass fields. We have a rake attachment where we um, also drag the uh, seagrass off the beach and also off the uh, water line of Vets Park. And the next item is going to be um, an actual turf groomer attachment, which we're going to use to maintain our turf fields. So this this item number 11 is for the tractor. Okay. Any questions and we, from... And we I'm also sorry. Promised, we promised this in... Um, our um, go around and, and and we put it in ended up putting the ARPA uh, fund. We promised this a particular um, um, piece of equipment. So uh, this is we're fulfilling our promise to the mayor that we would uh, get this type of equipment. Okay. Any questions from committee members? No. 
All in fact, favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, thank you. All right. 512, authorize a purchasing agent to issue a purchase order to Finch Turf Inc. in an amount not to exceed $28,499 for the sole source purchase of a Redemix, Redem, uh, Verde Top 1800 Artificial Turf Field Groomer from account number noted. I'll move that item. And I think you spoke to that, Ken, a little bit, right? Yes, this is the artificial turf groomer attachment for the above tractor. Okay. Any questions from council members, committee members? Nope. All in favor? Please signify raising your hand. Thank you. All right. It was approved 513. I'm, I'm sorry. Abstaining. I always abstain on everything that has to do with turf. So oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No so worries. you're abstaining? Are you abstaining? Yes, okay. And one abstention. Sorry. 513. Authorize the Mayor Harry W. Rilling to enter into an agreement with MGT for a study and analysis of the City of Norwalk, Connecticut Recreation and Parks Department fees and charges and to amend and to recommend a fees and charges policy for an amount not to exceed $61,550 from account numbers noted. Um, I will move the item, Mr. Stowers. Yeah, we went through an RFP and professor proposal and we received um, this particular proposal we selected um, and they're gonna be doing a, both a, a quantitative and a qualitative uh, um, study on fees, um, particularly um, to our market. Yeah, so they'll be doing a, um, they'll be doing first, they'll be doing a cost analysis based upon our fees and what uh, revenue to uh, um, to expenses, uh, see what percentage um, have to be at to cover a certain uh, uh, cost. The other one will, um, this be study to look at the market in such a way that we know that um, to develop a, a, a range of high, middle, and high range um, market rates that we can charge, uh, depending on also where the mayor would like to um, approve at any one time. So this will be a comprehensive study of our fees and charges. Uh, that won't it'll be a scientific study it won't be us guessing or doing uh, peer comparisons where our markets might be different so um so uh, this is this went through a process we selected this so we are now in the process of trying to get to work so we can get some final um, results by um, by may any questions from committee members uh, just to confirm, I, I can just see from the account numbers, we'd be using American Rescue Plan funds to pay for this, right? That's right. That's right. And do you, is there an expected turnaround time? Like how have they given you a timeline of yeah, we, when they expect uh, we, completion? We wanted to try and complete this by end of May. So we're trying to get this contract um, signed as quickly as possible so we can get oh that. i'm sorry have the contract signed by the end of may not the study right. completed no, 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 by no. the end of may the study by the end of may <laughs> yeah yeah it's, it's about a two two and a half um it will take them two to two and a half uh, months to get the study done and then i'm sorry just then step out once they've made their recommendations what happens next well, then it goes, and what happens next is then we'll recommend recommend um, fee increases probably to incur probably somewhere, fee increases or fee adjustments or modifications or whatever, um, um, probably sometime next, next uh, to take place, maybe probably sometime next year. Won't be in this budget cycle. You have more questions, Josh? No, I'm good. Okay. Anyone else? All right. All in favor? Opposed? That's okay. Thank you very much. That passes. All right. So now we're on to the discussion part of the calendar of, of the agenda.
Can everyone see that? Yes. I never know yep. if it's working. Um, so if you've been down to the beach lately, uh, you realize we have a lot of stuff going on down there. Uh, we're about 60% done with our parking lot renovation project. And we also just started dismantling the existing skate park. Uh, fence has been removed and the, uh, the ramps have been moved out of the way. Next, we'll be tearing up uh, the asphalt. So what I did for you guys to make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on, I did an existing picture right next to the what the lot's going to look like when it's finished. And uh, the first thing you notice is the change up here at the entrance where the main gatehouse um, is. The old entrance was sort of awkward. People will come in this way. It was actually two lanes. And then once you got to this point right here, you know, it was a little bit squirrely. You can either go left, you can go right, you can go straight. So we had a lot of conflict uh, with vehicles. Uh, the new design actually flows a lot nicer with the entrance. So there'll be a stop bar here. Um, Non-residents can come in and park. Residents can come in, go all the way around the beach, or they can avoid the gatehouse altogether and still drive the main loop all the way around to park along the water. Um, a few major changes to the lot are going to be the, we're getting rid of the ugly Jersey barriers, which we use to designate a non-resident parking. And if you see from the diagram, the new non-resident parking spaces are going to be color-coded. So in the picture, we have them yellow. I think I might actually change to orange or red. It hasn't been decided yet. So that's going to be a much cleaner look in terms of where the non-residents can park versus the residents. Uh, we're adding a lot of uh, infrastructure within the parking lot that's going to collect stormwater and send it through planting beds and plants in order to clean it before it gets into the sound. This is one of the new beds here. This is a new bed over here. Uh, this is a new bed over here. If you go down there and look, you'll see that there's curb cuts in these beds, which is gonna allow the parking lot water to enter into these uh, the swale basins uh, where they're gonna be heavily planted. Uh, one of the biggest changes we have into this design is the exit to the beach. So the current exit is down here. You drive all the way around, come through, drive all the way in front of Ripka's, in front of the bathroom buildings and then out the beach. So we are now closing that drive off as you can see in the design. So you're coming around in front of Ripka's, here's Ripka's cafe right here. You're not gonna be able to go straight through anymore. This is gonna be a pedestrian uh, drop off area where you can drop off stroller, coolers, the kids, and they can walk to the beach without worrying about traffic. So if you wanna exit the beach, you drive around here following the arrows and the main exit is gonna be down the center aisle of the beach. So that's now gonna be the main exit from the beach. This is still going to be opened down here, but we don't see it being heavily used just because it's a bit out of the way. Um, we consolidated our handicap parking. Uh, right now we have a few spots all along the entire uh, you know, lot here, which makes it a little bit cumbersome for people to find. So we actually consolidated the spots uh, together, uh, which will be easily marked and signed. Uh, there's gonna be a, a bollard system with a chain. You can kind of see in the picture here which will stop cars from driving into the pedestrian, pedestrian access way. These areas right here will be open up for drop off. So you can park here, drop off your stuff and then park into the main lot. So uh, pre-construction. So this lot over here, we had 519 uh, total spaces. This design here will have 545 uh, total spaces. So we're gaining about 26 spaces. And even though we're installing some of these new islands, the reason why we're gaining the spaces is because now we're adding parking along here, which didn't exist prior, and also parking along here, which didn't exist prior. So any of these spots we're losing because of these new islands, we're actually gaining because of these areas over here. Um, so it's gonna be, you know, it's, it's gonna be a, a really, you know, neat design. Um, it's gonna have traffic flow a lot smoother through the lot. It's gonna stop kind of the drag, the drag strip effect that we have going on here, which is very dangerous because you have people, you know, walking across here with coolers and, and beach chairs and the kids. And there's always, you know, vehicle pedestrian conflict. So that was sort of the main principle behind the design. The entire lot's gonna be paved and restriped and, and heavily planted. So between that and the skate park, it's gonna be an exciting year for the, uh, for the beach. And I know when um, there was part of the parking lot, like when you wanted to come in, I guess over where the red is, there was a little, um, the folks that you got to go through, the little. Um, right here. This is where the gatehouse was. Like, where is it? Right, right here. Okay. See my hand on the left picture? Uh-huh. That's what I meant, the gatehouse. Where, where is it now? Right here. 
Oh, it's still there. Okay. Yep. So it's facing this way, so they can see both lanes of cars coming in. Okay. This way, right here, it's actually facing this way. Okay. So, so cars are coming in, and they don't always see the cars coming in. So here, the gatehouse is facing out toward the entrance. Okay. So as these two lanes come in, the gate staff will be right here on either side. So this is the gatehouse right here. Mm -hmm. And so we gained all that parking space and, and the new skate park and all that stuff. It's just going to be really, really nice. Yes. Miss um, McMurr. Thank you so much, Chair Young. Um, Ken, this looks amazing. Um, how many visitor spots do we have? I know you mentioned we are gaining some spaces um, with the new design, which is awesome. But how yep. does that compare with resident versus non-resident spaces? So in, in the main lot, we have 395 resident spots. We have 150 non-resident spots site-wide for the entire site. We have a hundred more non-resident spots down here along the water. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, resident spots along the water. That that would have caused a riot. Mm -hmm. We have a hundred. I know. Spots I was like, here. wow. Yeah, no, no, it's <laughs> my bad. We have a hundred spots here along the gravel, and we have another another 65 in shady. So for a grand total, we have 660 spots for residents and 150 spots for non-residents. Great. And um, I know we've discussed this in the past, but would you mind just taking us briefly through um, the need for this project um, and why we sort of went through it and approved it? Because I know that's come up um, on social media, as I'm sure, sure. you've seen. So, so there's several needs. For, first, the parking lot needs a repaving. You can see here on my left picture, all these dark spots are all patches. Um, this right here is a drainage issue. So as you drive through the beach, even in the middle of July on a hot summer day, there's always a puddle in the center of the beach. So the main thought behind this was while we're doing this kind of redesign, let's bring in some green infrastructure. So they're gonna move the water into these planting beds, which will further filter the water before it eventually ends up into the sound. And then we also needed a better, a better circulation of traffic. Uh, this strip down here, if you look at the left picture, never really worked well. It's awfully wide. Um, cars go awfully fast down here because it is a straightaway. And you have constant pedestrian and vehicular conflicts in these areas. You have kids running out of the cars, dying to get to the beach. You have them running over here to the splash pad. You have mothers with coolers and strollers, you know, trying to make this, you know, pass to the beach. All the time you have cars zipping by here, you know, just cruising along the beach. So there were a couple of thoughts, one to increase pedestrian safety and traffic flow, and then the second to bring in some green infrastructure um, and to get a cleaner design and look to the entire parking lot. And the entire thing had to be repaved anyway, so it was a perfect time to bring all these things together, correct? Absolutely. And we're also replacing sections of water line too while we're at it. That's great. Um, thank you so much for that clarification. I really appreciate all of your work on this. Mm -hmm. Any, any um, other comments? Okay, go ahead. Uh, thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, while we're talking about fees as well, is there part of the fee study going to encompass whether there's going to be a change in the fee structure for um, non-residents and parking? Absolutely, that's gonna be part of the study, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, this looks really great. Yeah. <laughs> when can people, exp when is, I'm sorry, Forgive me if you said it already and I missed it. The expected completion date? Uh, so yeah, so we have a target date of May 15th. And I, I believe we're gonna hold tight to that because we had a really good uh, winter with the lack of snow. So uh, we're moving right along. So uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty confident we'll be done by May 15th. Great. So before Memorial Day, that's great. Yes. Wonderful. All right, any other questions for Mr. Stowers or Mr. Hughes? No. Nope. Fantastic. This is just great work. And I'm, I'm just so excited. I mean, there's so many things going on in the city all over the place. So, and this was definitely needed. Um, all in favor? Oh, we're not a no, we'll vote. Discussion, we'll discussion vote. only. It's discussion. Because, I mean, because if you turned say, it we're down, very tired. If you guys tired. turned it down, can, I'd be in listen, big trouble. I yeah, we're very tired. I'm listening. so exhausted. I don't know what to do. I you told you to vote on that. You're not getting the best just, of us. We, we could vote on a motion to make like Darlene the Queen of Norwalk. Like, yeah, right. You know. And we would be like, yes, yes. yay. Yes. Not today. It'd be a nightmare. All right. For last discussion item.
I, I, this this is fantastic, and I'm glad you both asked the questions because of the, you know just put it out there for folks. But I think when they see it, they'll be very pleased. So, great job, um, Mr. Stowers. You're on the number two, the proposed fees and charges. You're on mute. Let me try and share my screen. Somewhere here is something. Screen is not being shared. For some reason my screen I am not able to share. Hmm. Yeah, and I sent that to you. I don't know if you can share it. Is Ken still on? Is Ken still on? Yes. Can I send you the the fees that? One spreadsheet. I just sent it. Let me grab it. Yep, let me see if you got it. Okay, I got it. Okay. For some reason, mine's with the sharing. I don't know why. Madam Chair, I'm here. Hello, Miss Ayers. Hello. Uh, let the record show that Ms. Ayers has showed up attendance. Okay. Are you okay, Nikki? Okay, you guys see it? Can, can you have to control? Yep. Our our um our charter uh, requires that we anytime we raise fees, um facility fees, um that we um, have a public hearing and steer in order to uh, try and meet some of our budget uh, requests in terms of trying to cover some of our, our funding requests. We uh, uh, increased uh, fees by about, uh, for the last, kind of covering the last two years. Uh, I don't know what happened before uh, I got here, but. Okay, can I ask a question? Can, can you yeah. enlarge that a little bit? I like. Yeah. Can you enlarge it? Um. I'm not thinking so. Doing. Hang on. Um. It looks small on your screen. Is it down below? Gotcha. It, yeah, I think there's either. Um, if you go down to the bottom right, you down can enlarge bottom. it with the bar. I got gotcha. you. Yep. Yeah, Thanks so much, Ken. Yeah. Okay, so as I, as I stated, the charter um, requires that we have a public hearing. So we wanted to come before you. I wanted to come before you and discuss, at least give you a chance to look at these fees before we um, before we hold hold the public hearing. Um, they were bumped up in terms of an, just an inflationary um, um, margin over the last couple of years. Um, the the fees are very slight. I went over this with um, uh, the chief of staff, um, the mayor's chief of staff. Her opinion was they were they were uh, very moderate and uh, didn't think have a lot of uh, problems. So, but I wanted to bring this before you. It's in your packet, but um, I can go through each one of these if we have time. But I can just tell you. Increase 7% over the two years. Um, Veterans Park Marina, um, we raised um, the resident fee by $2 on the, um, the first um, fee you see there. Um, A66 and over, we raised uh, $2. Um, non residents, uh, we raised $3. 
there, like I said, over 66, we raised um, $2. And then, uh, as you can see, the other um, fees we raised slightly. Yeah, so, so just so, just for clarification, these just could be modest inflationary fees. Uh, we'll come back once the fee study is done with, you know, probably what's going to be bigger recommendations. And then we'll have a public hearing on those and also a vote by the committee. So these are more just inflationary fees because they haven't been done in a couple of years. Right. And these, these will be for the 20, um, the 24 fiscal year. So. Um, 25. Okay. So um, Ms. Ayers, you had a question? I do, thank you. Um, I, I, had to, I don't know, I've lost all sense of time lately. M maybe three weeks ago, and I, it might've been the whole committee, it might've been the whole council, I'm not completely sure. Mm -hmm. um, we received email from a constituent who was a property owner mm -hmm. and he wanted to access, I, I think he was talking about the beach and his complaint was, the amount of money he had to pay to access the beach. Is that can, part can, of the year? Yeah, yeah, I think I think, did I you think my email, can, Nicole. I think yeah, I, I can, sent you the response. Yeah. You can, did, I understand the I understand the rationale behind it. But can you point where it where is that inflation or the new number at on this chart? You mean parking? Hang on, I'll get your calf pasture. Well, so I'm here's your here's non-resident. Here's non-resident parking weekdays, which is forty dollars up to forty-two, and here's uh, non-resident parking weekends, which is sixty-five to seventy-two. So what okay. it is? So if your if your vehicle is not registered in Norwalk, whether or not you own real property or not, it's treated as a non a non-resident. Um, Nicole, did you have another question, or your hand is just up? No, I wanted to. I, I'm still on this. I'm sorry. That's okay. Nicole, did you? Are you done with your question? No, he was explaining it to me. <laughs> He's explaining. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. He's explaining it to her. Okay. Go yeah. Ahead. So, so if if you're a if you own if you own a house in Norwalk, but let's say your your vehicle is is registered in Florida. There's a fee that we charge because the vehicle is not registered in Norwalk, because the whole pass system at the beach is based on vehicle registration. So if if you're a Norwalk resident and your vehicle is registered in Norwalk, you're free. If you're a Norwalk resident and you decide to register your vehicle in Florida, it's two hundred fifty dollars for a season pass. Okay, so the two. Okay, so that's okay. So it's two hundred and fifty dollars for a season pass. I'm not arguing that. If you guys say that's what it is, it is. Is that comparative to other neighboring communities? Uh, so some other neighboring communities won't even let you in. Okay. Yeah, but what about the ones that will let you in? What are they charging res non-residents? Uh, I just like, pulled the fees, Robert. Like Westport, Weston. Today, Pardon? we just talked about, uh, so Westport just went to, hang on, I think it was 545. Oh, okay. I wasn't prepared for that. I'm so yeah. sorry. And my reason for asking is not that you're doing anything wrong, but mm -hmm. I, I would like to have an educated mm -hmm. conversation with this person. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just wanted to, I, I can at least say these are our prices, but compared to such and such, you know, it's, it's a much lower. So if you don't have the answer right now, that is perfectly yeah. fine. So, I mean, so, so the way I explain it to people, so this is a resident, a resident pass system. In order to be a resident, your resident is determined by where you spend more than half the year. That's it. So if you spend three months at Florida, technically you're not a resident of Florida. So your vehicle should be registered in Norwalk. So it's really just a matter of him understanding um, if, he, if he's truly a resident of, of Norwalk, he needs to register his car with Norwalk. Correct. I mean, that state law is you have to register your vehicle where you reside. And from my- Ken, Don't mind me popping in because I wrote, I helped write the ordinance and um, Ken, helped, Ken helped us when um, we had, um, oh, why am I blanking out in his name? Nick, right? <laughs> Ken? Nick. 
Um, yeah. Yes, Ken, Nick, and I rewrote the ordinance together with the rest of the committee, and I think it was before your guys' time. And that's mm -hmm. basically what happens. If you're a person who has a house in Florida and a house in Norwalk, and you want to establish residency so you don't pay taxes to Connecticut, then you register your car to Florida. And so that's the argument. That's the, the bucket of people we're trying to collect. So um, the people who kind of complain about this kind of want to have it both ways. They want to be mm -hmm. a resident of Connecticut for purposes of parking their car in the summer, but they definitely don't want to pay Connecticut taxes and fees and things like that. So they're a resident of Florida. Does that kind of make sense? So oh, no, I, no. I, yeah. I get it. You know, I like to respond to people with factual oh. information. So I just, I get it. And I thank you for everybody was saying he's not a resident. He's a landlord. So I just wanted to understand it and I understand it now. So thank you so much. So just so I, I found the fees. Um, so Westport is, they're changing their fee structure this year. So for non-resident passes, it's now $545 for the season down from 775. So that's what their non-resident passes are for the season at Westport. Okay. Yeah, a lot of the um, surrounding neighbors uh, that do have, um, and um, when we when we actually go before the um, I think questions when we have a public hearing, so we'll have all the, we'll have all that information. Uh, I think that what's I think what's missing in the budget process is more of a connection between revenues and expenses, and so this was um, what we uh, um, when we were doing our revenue projections. Um, with Henry, we explained what we were doing with him. And so we had to come here and discuss it with you, and then we'll have a public hearing, and then we'll come back to you for approval. Um, so uh, it's just part of the process. We, like, like Ken said, we're just bumping these up for fiscal year um, uh, 24, but uh, fiscal year 25, uh, we expect some, some changes. Uh, uh, Ms. McMurray, you had a question? I do. Um, I just had a question about the resident versus non-resident parking fees again, because it comes up a lot in yeah. um, with my constituents. Yeah. Um, one particular constituent reached out to me recently, and they not only live here full time, but they also own a business here. But their car is owned by the company that they work with, and so it is therefore registered out of state, and they are not able to get into the parks or you know the beaches for free yes, they are. And yeah they, they, so they, they are okay yeah so if they contact the recreation office okay so maybe um, that's what he didn't do because yeah, he, so he got contract. a bunch of tickets at yeah. taylor farm so what we need is we need a letter from his company a company letterhead saying that he's okay. the sole driver of that vehicle great yep great i will pass that along if he doesn't know that already um and i appreciate that thank yep. you so much any other questions for Robert and Ken? All right. Um, would it be helpful for everybody to get this information or would you just want to wait until we go through that process? I mean, I think. I mean, this is more of a heads up. Okay. There's nothing really earth shattering here. No. No, and these are mostly uh, single, these are mostly um, rentals, like. Uh, park rentals, facility rentals. So there are people who want to rent our facilities, um, parking. So these are these won't uh, and it, they won't have a big impact on uh, affordability because it's it's kind of a choice uh, thing. So um, we want to do to um, when we talk to the mayor and Misha, that's they wanted to make a point that they didn't want it. So that's why we bumped it up just a little bit and we chose the fees that an ordinance requires us to come to you for. Okay. Yeah. So we'll schedule a public hearing uh, probably. Um, special, special meeting before our, um, before our board, before our committee meeting. All right. All right. Yeah. Any other comments from from committee members? I'm actually very glad, um, Ken, that you brought that up, Jen. That came up at the district C meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. 
um, the parking issue. If so, anybody has any, you know, any if, issues, have them call the recreation office. Yeah, no, I, I will. I, I, we've dealt with all types of situations, all types of issues. So chances are we have a solution. They just don't know about it. You know, I got okay. a ticket last year. You probably deserved it, Jen. I totally <laughs> did not, but I would have paid it anyway because I wouldn't. Have, but I was glad I got the ticket because it really showed me. I think I emailed Robert after it happened. Just to be like, <laughs> yeah, I, remember, hey. I remember. It took me. It took me through the whole process, which I hadn't been through before, because I'm such a law-abiding citizen, Mr. Hughes. <laughs> um, and we had gotten a new car because our car had been totaled um, in an, a car accident where everybody was fine. Thank you very much. But we had registered our car, and anyway, it was good that I went through the system yeah. because I was able to sort of see it from you know our neighbors' views when they bring up these complaints to us or concerns, and. Um, yeah, it was it was an educational experience. I'll put it yeah. that way. And you'll hear you'll hear the system doesn't work. We don't pick up you know non-resident vehicles, but the system is very good um, at picking up non-registered vehicles, as you can tell from your situation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and you know we remain we always remain flexible. We want to solve. Of course. Issues. We don't want to be hard and fast about anything. No, it, it got resolved. And in yeah. fact, you know, when I learned what had happened, I was like, I'm happy to pay it because I didn't want to end up in like Nancy on Norwalk, like council person McMurray uses any <laughs> leverage. I would never, ever do that. So, um, but it was, a, it was an educational experience and it helped me sort of understand the process and everything. So I'm glad I got that ticket. Okay. We're glad to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if there's nothing else, someone make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Everybody did. Ms. Thank McMurr, <laughs> Ms. Shanahan, and Mr. Goldstein. Um, Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you, you all. Good night. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye.